I still have in studio Martin Asiedudate, and we've been joined by Ebenezer uh, Nyako, our in-house uh, data analyst. Thank you so much for your time. Martin, if you look at the numbers, first of all, I come to you. You've seen that between 1992 and now, we have been able to more than inc uh, double the number of women mm. in uh, Parliament. Good enough? Um, there's still a lot of room for improvement considering the numbers that we have seen over the last few years mm. of our election cycles. And we'll take our viewers through some of the specific numbers where, for instance, since 92, up until now, we've had in excess of 100 and over men. In fact, more in, in the pre current parliament, yeah. we have well over 200 men, mm. but fewer women. And it tells you that a lot more active action and campaigns and mm. activation needs to go on if we want to increase female participation. Across the world, in countries where we have women in high positions or decision-making positions, we can actually tell on the face of it that there seem to be some action, decisive actions and deliverables that people can see. So it is high time Ghana also has women or gets women actively in decision-making positions. And it is even worse when you go to local level elections. But on the national level elections, this is how the numbers look like. From 92 up until uh, 2000, comparatively, it is only in 2020, I should say, that we have the most women in parliament. And uh, I'm sure uh, Eben also joining us can help us understand the, the numbers, the workings that go into this. The male faction have dominated over time. The only time we saw a steady rise was from 92 up until 2004. Then it declined again. And then from 2012 up until 2020, we've seen that again, it is still marginal. Mm. We are hoping that the current election that we are going into 2024, December 7, we will be able to hover above 40 to have more women in parliament. I don't know what the Ben has to say about this, the, the, the current numbers that we have. Yes, uh, we seem to have made some progress. But you can see that we started at 16, we are now at 40. Mm. I mean, we are making progress, but it is not really at the pace that you want it. Right. So, I mean, in percentages, we can talk about 8% in 1992, and then currently we are at 14.55%. Uh, mm. What I think is that looking at the percentage of women or the ratio in Ghana, I think 14% is still way below. It's low. I mean, something in the range of at least 2025, 20, yeah. you can say that we are making progress. Mm. But I mm. think uh, the 14%, even though there is a slight improvement each ele election cycle, yeah. I think we really have to work on the numbers at uh, around 25 I you think we'll target be, that. Yes. 25 and, and is quite interesting. But then just to ask, I don't know, you will play a lot with the data, but what has been the success rate of, for instance, women uh, contesting and winning? Because we know that this year we are expecting about 100, over 100 women to contest. Yes. Hopefully, if the success rate is high, then maybe we are getting more than 40. But what do you think? Look, surprisingly, there is a correlation between female contestants mm. and then the number of uh, female MPs who end up in parliament. Okay. Mm. If you look at the 2020 data, mm approximately 14% of the aspirants were female. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It ended up that the final results yeah. of uh, female MPs that were elected also came to the same percentage of 14%. 14 percent. Mm. Okay. In 2024, for those who have filed to contest, mm. you can see that the same ratio which pertained in 2020 yeah. is still what we have in 2024. Mm. So, in percentage terms, there is not that much increase even at the registration at the level. registration level. Yeah. So that is where the problem is. Mm. So the problem has to be tackled from the registration level, where aspirants feel confident, yeah. more women feel confident mm. to register, to file, and to contest for MP ship. If right. that part is not solved. Uh, we're still going to hover around the 14% that we are so looking at. So in, indirectly, what he's saying is that if you look at the fact that we have 40 women in parliament, it means that comparatively, in terms of percentages, we only have about 14% increase from 92 up until now, just about 14% increase in terms of those who have, the women who've been able to go through the process and ending up in parliament. Mm. And those who have registered for this year's election, it's just about 14% of the total applicants 
for parliamentary positions. So we have 801 people filing to contest to yeah. go to parliament. Out of that number, 683 are men. That's 85% of mm -hmm. the total registrants are, or candidates are men. And just about the same 14%. So the argument he's making is that if we're able to increase the percentage to say 20%, it has a correlation, direct correlation, to the number of women who can end up in parliament. But a lot more work needs to be done also by the political parties. Exactly. Because these women actually go on the back of political parties. And unfortunately, the data we currently have indicates that we actually do not even have one female independent candidate. So technically, a lot has to come from the parties. What do the parties have in terms of their own planning to empower more women to go into uh, political positions? Mm. The argument has been made that the parties should consider their strongholds. Yeah. Strongholds where they are certain that they will win those seats, they should allow women to contest w those particular seats where they are, sh they are certified and sure that these are likely to go to parliament. That is one way we can increase female participation in parliament. But... Even in those strongholds, they still make it a, uh, an open field and uh, all play or where over 80% of the time, the men seem to dominate and win, even in the strongholds of the various political parties. So I, I'm sure this is the same number you're referencing. Yeah, the 14, I mean, it has become a critical uh, number mm. uh, or a metric that we have to look at. We need more, like a, a big higher percentage than the 14. Yeah. Later joining us in studio uh, via interview, uh, for an interview will be... Uh, Nanaya Ajantua, she is a political activist, uh, a female af affirmative action activist and a politician herself. It will be interesting to know from her perspective really what is the issue? Why aren't women uh, availing themselves for MPship? Because mm. 118 shows you that maybe the women are not interested or probably mm. there's a systemic issue that is uh, hindering them from getting into the space. So it will be very interesting to get uh, her perspective on that. But back to you, Eben. So from 118 and still on the 14% margin that you're talking about, it looks like we should still be expecting just about 40 again, or? No, there could be some improvement here and there. Okay. But what I want to say is that let us break it down along party lines. Okay. Since 2000, uh, I think we have to commend the NPP in respect of okay. female MPs. Mm. Okay. Mm. The NDC has never outperformed the MPP since the, for like two decades. Wow. Their best has always been to be at par with them. Mm. That is like in 2020, okay. when each party had 20 uh, female each. Mm. Okay. But within that interval, I mean, always more female MPs come from the side of the MPP than the NDC. That's a very interesting one because exactly. we know that majority of the females to come from Greater Accra and Ashanti region. What is that telling us, really? You have to look at it in terms of percentage and the number of constituencies. Okay. Greater Accra, fine. Mm -hmm. But Ashanti region, I will put central and even voter ahead of Ashanti. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Because Ashanti has 47 constituencies. Mm -hmm. Central has 23. Yeah. So if you take the number of MPs per constituency, mm. what it means is that uh, Central and voter are doing well than Ashanti that mm. has 47 constituencies. So it is not just the nominal number that we are looking for. It must be looked at in the context of the number of uh, constituencies mm. uh, that uh, uh, we have. So, well, so your and, argument and, and basically maybe, is that... Maybe before we come to that, let's just, like he indicated, there yeah. are regions that have the most female candidates going into December 7. And it is also instructive to note that two of the regions with the most registered uh, participants for this year's election, Greater Accra and Ashanti region, because even by uh, population, these two regions have the most. Yeah. And in the Greater Accra region, they have the most female candidates, 23. Ashanti region has 21. For the male Candidates in these two regions, Greater Accra is looking at 114 men, mm. 114 men, and we have 20, not even up to 30. So it tells you that although we have some increment, it is still very small. Ashanti region, like he's indicating, 47 constituencies, and you'd have ordinarily thought that again, if the old narrative I made, uh, assumption I made, was anything to go by, the MPP is assured that there are some constituencies in the region they would win. So women are supposed to be even be allowed or encouraged to take those places. 
we are uncertain of which particular constituencies that these women have filed at in the Ashanti region. But in the Ashanti region, we have 21. In subsequent days, we'll try and dig down to the nitty gritties of that for you. These are the regions with the least female registrants or aspirants. Northeast, zero. Ahafo, zero. Savannah has one female contender. Mm. Right, and then there are some other regions like northern region, like there's only three women who are participating. You know, so th those are the key issues that we are looking at. Now let's talk to the specific numbers over the years. How many have gone to parliament? How many women have gone to parliament? And which regions seem to have the most? He was talking about Ashanti and Greater Accra being the two dominant ones. And you can tell from here. Maybe you would want to start, especially from the Greater Accra region, from the top. Yes, so or we should work it bottom up approach. So maybe these are the regions with the least yeah. over the electioneering so, cycle of Ghana from 92 up until 2020. You can tell that the upper regions actually perform worse. You get the point? So, upper west region over the years since 92, they've only had three women in parliament. Mm. Only three. And we are talking about uh, an election cycle of uh, about nine different election cycles, only three female representation. You come to the Upper East region, they have about eight. The current parliament naturally has the most women. We have 40 women in parliament, yeah. 20 MPP, 20 NDC. But if you dig deeper, then you can tell that these are the regions, this is the regional breakdown of the women that we currently have in parliament. We also have the Northern uh, Bono all inching up gradually. So this is just chronologically to tell you how the regions have performed. And it also naturally uh, tends to come from the fact that those regions have the most numbers in terms of registered voters and people who are actively participating in Ghana's politics as well. Yeah, so in terms of percentage, that, as I, I was saying, you look at Ashanti like 2020, yeah. five uh, female MPs from that region. Mm. Central has six, mm. voter has five. So if you, you rescale the numbers in terms of percentages, and if you weight it by constituencies, yeah. you realize that central and voter are really doing well in terms of the promotion of female MPs uh, in parliament. Mm -hmm. Ashanti, looking at their number of constituencies, at least something in the range of 10, 10. Yeah. around 10 would have been a bit okay, but they, are, they, they do mostly, they have not gone beyond five mm -hmm. in any election cycle. You can see. But when you go to central, they can do six, six, five. So mm. their numbers are quite good. Mm. And then you go to voter, you have five, five. So they're also holding their own. Mm. So you can see that central, voter, greater Accra. I mean, these are the three regions that are really uh, doing well in terms of the numbers for female MPs. Yeah, it's interesting that the central region, at least two women that we know are, are, are contesting are going against each other, uh, which would further reduce the numbers that we're talking about. But yeah. we see how that, those dynamics, some very interesting submissions at Martin, but you still have your numbers. Board over yes. there. And uh, I mean, on the, coming off the back of what Nanaya just said, now that we have some law mm -hmm. backing the, um, the assistance for women, yeah. hopefully this year's election, that will translate into people actually going out to vote for women. They also have the conversation about competence and mm -hmm. we should look at competence and not gender. That is fair. However, if there are women who are competent, do let them go through. Mm -hmm. It's not all the time that you have to say, no, it's a, it's a male dominated issue. Uh, while that is also uh, in the mix, she, you know, we, before we had her join us, yeah. we're talking about why, um, I, I was about to call you Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's actually almost becoming a doctor. Almost so, there. So, why, why Doc was talking about the central region and the Volta region yeah. actually doing better than the Ashanti region in terms of the, the women ratio? participation and the ratio. If you look here, so the central region, for instance, has about... 25 constituencies, mm -hmm. 23 constituencies. And out of that 23, they are able to make six women. And consistently, so the number has actually been good. Five, 23, six out of 23, mm -hmm. another six out of the 23. Yeah. So they are doing better as compared to the Ashanti region that has 47, and you don't even have up to 10 women from the region. Again, the Volta region has 18 constituencies. And out of the 18, they've had five women in 2016, another five in 2020. If even they retain 
five in 2024, they have still done better than the Ashanti region in terms of allowing women participation in politics. And uh, same can be said for Greater Accra region. At least they have the highest number, more encouragement in that direction. But there is marginal progress. And now that we have uh, the affirmative action and the law backing the women activity in, you know, in almost every general aspect of life, we need to encourage more women to take part in the politics of the day. Yeah, so if you, if you look at the data, you see Greater Accra, there is, since 20, 2008, there's a consistent effort and an upward movement. Yeah. So from four, they moved to eight, 10, 13. Let us hope that this year they can make maybe around 16, 17 mm -hmm. in, that, in that order. So, it's but it's very to also know what is really working for the Greater Accra region. Yeah. Why, why is Greater Accra have been able to field more women um, what's happening i'm sure maybe you can answer that question for us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when we come back you're still watching election 360 here on uh tv3 we're going for a quick break when we come back we'll delve into the conversation of the role of independent candidates as small lap parties and how they fit in to the general election situation stay with us <laughs> 